Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Opaq 11 inch 2 in 1 laptop by Ondo. And a big thanks to the people at Gearbest for sending this over. They got in contact with me and they said I could review anything on their website. So I thought it'd be really interesting to take a look at one of these Chinese laptops. Now I did a little bit of research on this thing beforehand and apparently the design of this is a clone of the Lenovo Yoga, in particular the 11 inch model from their 700 series. Now the specifications are a little bit more more on par with your typical Chromebook. Inside this thing, we have an Intel Atom Z8300 64-bit quad-core processor at 1.4 gigahertz. We have integrated graphics, uh, two gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, 32 gigabytes of flash storage, a 1080p screen, and of course, this thing has Windows 10 installed. Now, in today's review, first off, I'm going to take this thing out of the box. We will see what exactly is included with this laptop. Then I'll tell you guys my first impressions. We'll take a look around the system. I'll run some benchmarks, play some games games and maybe even try to install Linux on this thing because I think this would make a decent little Linux laptop. Uh, now, you know, no edgy 13 year olds, please leaving nasty comments about Linux in the comments section. It's going to be a small part of this video. And if you don't want to watch that section, you can skip through it. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box. And by the way, if you want to check this thing out, it's currently $189 on the GearBest website. The link for this will be in the description. Now I have to admit guys, I did already take a peek inside this box because when it arrived I noticed that the seals were broken and I just want to make sure everything was still in here and intact. I think customs had a go at it on the way over and for the five seconds I actually handled this thing I was actually pretty impressed. As you can see this thing is really thin only 19 millimeters in thickness just over 2.5 pounds a really portable little machine. I'll just open it up real quick for you guys so you can take a look at the inside and we'll take all of this plastic sheeting off uh, when we get to the laptop but I want to go further down into the box to see what else is included so we're just gonna pull this section out it appears we have a warranty card a user manual uh, right here and then the power supply and of course the cable that runs to the power supply with a US plug attached. So that's about it for the contents of the box let's take a closer look at that laptop because I'm just dying to check this thing out Oh, and this is my favorite part of videos like this. <whistles> and let's get the bottom one too. I think there's actually a lot of plastic on this thing. There's some on the uh, outer casing as well. And one more on the bottom. And with that, it is officially unboxed. The outer casing of this thing is entirely composed of plastic and with that in mind it doesn't feel too bad. I attempted to flex it in my hands and I got very little give out of it. It feels like a pretty sturdy little laptop actually. Now let's just take a look at some of the external features on this thing. We're going to start from the left. You can see that we have a USB port right here and there's also an additional USB port on the other side. Now I'm not sure uh, whether these things are USB 2.0 or USB 3.0. Uh, the description was a little bit iffy on that subject so we'll actually break out Crystal Disk Mark and a state drive to test that out uh, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right next to that uh, volume buttons power buttons and if we move over to the other side you can see our additional USB port power jack HDMI out or actually mini HDMI out and then a micro SD card slot opening up the laptop you can see that this thing is equipped with one of those weird one-piece touch pads I'm really not a big fan of these and I usually run into issues with these uh, they're sometimes really hard to use so we will see if that that's the case with this one when we uh, turn it on and have a go at it. The keyboard doesn't feel too bad. Uh, not the greatest thing in the world. There is some feedback, but there's not much movement in the keys. And right here, you can see our 1080p 10 point capacitive touchscreen display. So it's been about three days since that last clip. I got sidetracked. I had other things to do. I was spending time with family and I finally managed to get back to the review today. But during those three days, I actually took this thing and used it as my daily use laptop. And I have some good things and some bad things to tell you guys from that experience. I want to talk about external features for just a little bit more uh, starting with the trackpad the trackpad is as I expected I don't really like it it can be a bit finicky to use it is usable uh, but you know I would prefer just to use a traditional mouse over it definitely would prefer to use a traditional mouse as you can see I'm uh, moving the cursor around right here but if I put my finger down to left click all of a sudden it just stops and starts up again so it does take a couple seconds to register that there is another finger on that trackpad and second off I really don't like uh, how the 
clicks feel on this. You know, just pushing the uh, single piece trackpad down, uh, clicking around here, just doesn't feel very good in my opinion. I did conduct further investigation on the USB ports. It turns out that the USB port on the right side of the laptop is indeed a USB 3.0 port. Got some pretty awesome speeds out of that one. And the USB port on the left side of the laptop is a USB 2.0 port. There are two things I really like about this laptop. The first thing is its convergence capabilities. It's really neat. You can flip this thing all over the place, transform it into a tablet, stand it up right and backwards. Uh, I wasn't really sure how much I would actually like this feature, but now that I actually have the laptop in my hands, I think it's really cool and they've executed it really well. Uh, the laptop has a built-in gyroscope, so it knows what direction it is facing and it will flip the screen to compensate for that direction. And when you put it into tablet mode, it also deactivates the keyboard, which is really awesome so you, you know your lap isn't pressing a bunch of keys when you put it down um yeah so i just think they've done that aspect really really well i really enjoyed using it both as a laptop and as a tablet and the second thing that has really impressed me is the touchscreen. besides from being absolutely beautiful once again this is a 1080p ips display it's also highly usable and something to note real quick is that it does come with a screensaver installed out of the box so that's a really nice touch it's really responsive as you can see i'll just pop open chrome here I just took a slight tap. I will navigate to my website. It does have multi-touch support, as I said earlier, so I can zoom in like so and just move around here. That's working all fine and dandy. Uh, it's surprisingly good coming from a computer that is under two hundred dollars. I'll just pop open a couple more applications here and there. Uh, navigate to the start menu. I'll open up a keyboard to show you how that works. So let's say we need to find uh, Microsoft Office Word. So I'll just type in Word. And I'll open that up using the touchscreen, and that works just fine. So, yeah, a surprisingly decent touchscreen coming from a computer that is under 200 bucks. Performance on the system configuration is surprisingly good. It boots up in just over 30 seconds, and even though we only have 2 gigabytes of RAM installed in this system, it still gets along very, very well. It's a very snappy little office machine. I was opening up applications all over the place, and it did not skip a beat. When I first turned this thing on, I was really happy to see that they did not mess with Windows. It was pretty much a clean install besides the fact that the proper drivers were installed. They didn't install any junk software. They left all the settings stock, which is a good thing and bad thing because I had to go and change some privacy settings. Um, but besides that, I really appreciate the fact that they did not mess with Windows. Now, keep in mind that inside this thing, you only have 32 gigabytes of flash storage to work with. And right off the bat, Windows takes 15 gigabytes of that. So you only have 15 gigs to yourself. And after I installed all the applications that I needed and ran all the updates that were required. I only had 10 gigabytes left. So you're going to want to take advantage of the fact that there is a micro SD card slot on the side of this thing. Uh, a majority of your applications, you're probably going to want to install to a micro SD card. Benchmark results weren't really too surprising. They were on the lower side and, you know, since the system's rocking a quad-core Atom with Intel integrated graphics, that's about what I expected. But in my opinion, those benchmark results don't really do this system justice. They would lead you to believe that the system's a little bit on the slower side, but when you're using it, it feels really snappy. Uh, it feels like a pretty powerful system. Now, graphics-wise, uh, yeah, it is a bit sluggish. As you can see, I had a 3D Mark running and it was a bit laggy. But when we get to the gaming section, you will see that it actually runs older games very, very well. Uh, struggles a little bit with newer games, it will play them, but considering what it is, it is pretty capable. I noticed this during benchmarking and I thought I should bring it up to you guys. The bottom of this laptop does get a bit toasty when the CPU is at full load, so I have my uh, infrared thermometer right here and we'll just take some temperatures. Uh, at max, it's sitting about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, so not super hot, uh, but it's definitely warm and it's something that you should take note of if you like to keep your laptop on your lap. Gaming wise, I really didn't think I was going to be able to get much out of the system since it only has two gigabytes of RAM installed, but I was wrong. I started out with something really light. I opened up Halo Combat Evolved, set the settings to max, and just played a multiplayer session. Gameplay was super smooth, didn't run into any issues. The laptop handled it just fine, and it was highly enjoyable. Uh, next, I went on to something a little bit newer. I downloaded Portal and installed it on this machine. I didn't set the settings 
frames to max, but I set them to high. Uh, at max, it, the frame rate was just a little bit too low, but at high settings, uh, everything was just fine. Uh, same story as Halo Combat Evolved. Really enjoyable, smooth gameplay. I had a lot of fun there as well. And then I moved to something that is pretty recent. I downloaded Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon and installed it on this PC, and gameplay was eh, it was okay. Um, I set all the settings to uh, the lowest settings possible. I don't remember what resolution I had it on. I'll throw it up on the screen for you guys. But yeah, I was getting about uh, 15 to 20 frames per second consistently. And it, it, it was playable, but in my opinion, it definitely wasn't an enjoyable experience. So this system struggles with newer games, but hey, it handles older games just fine. And this isn't even intended as a gaming PC. This is just your daily productivity machine that can handle some light gaming, apparently. As you can see, I'm now running Ubuntu 16.04 off a of flash drive. I wanted to go with something a little more mainstream, so I picked Ubuntu. I'm not a big fan of Unity, but this is something that I feel like more people are going to be familiar with. Uh, Performance-wise, everything is okay. Applications open within a reasonable amount of time, even though we are running this off a USB flash drive. Animations are nice and smooth. There's no graphical glitches. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of stuff isn't working right now. The touchscreen isn't working. Uh, wireless isn't working. The sound isn't working. Um, um, so it is going to take a little bit of work to get a Linux distro like this fully up and running on this laptop. I think for now I'm just going to leave this machine with only Windows installed on it. I like to have a dual boot configuration on my daily use laptop because I use Linux for school and I use Windows for production and it's just practical for me to have both on a single system. Uh, but it looks like that's not really going to be feasible with this hardware. You know, I'm going to have to tinker around uh, with it for a little bit and that's something I'm not going to do uh, for this review. At the beginning of this video I didn't say I was going to try to take this thing apart because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get it apart but as you can see I did manage to get it open. I took out all of the screws which was an absolute pain in the butt and then I carefully pried it open because it is held together by plastic clips as well and we are now inside the thing uh, there's nothing much here it's actually pretty boring you could see our 30 watt hour battery right here uh, it's advertised to give you seven hours of battery life but in reality I only managed to get four and a half hours out of it with moderate use I do like to crank my screen brightness up though so that might also be a contributing factor to uh, the uh, lower battery life than advertised I think I had it sitting at 75% in Windows. Uh, this is the computer right here. Uh, our processor should be under the shielding right here along with the RAM. And then you can see all of our other various components right here. It's actually pretty boring. Uh, there's nothing real you can upgrade, which is kind of disappointing. I can see it's running out to an expansion board right here, which has an additional USB port and some buttons. Uh, cables running out to the LCD screen or speakers. And yeah, that's really about it. So here's just a quick sample of video and audio from the system's integrated camera and microphone. As you can see, they're definitely not the best in the world. Video is very grainy and audio is pretty poor. Um, I have the video set to 720p right now and I'm currently using Cyberlink UCAM 7 to record because for some reason uh, the Windows camera application would not work on this PC. It would not record and it kept giving me error messages so I just dropped it and decided to use something else. There are two more things I want to mention before I end this review. The first one is that the speakers are okay. Sound quality produced by them is good but they're not exactly the loudest things in the world. I'll just throw up a quick sample to give you guys a general idea of what exactly they sound like. Hello guys and welcome to another installment of the Bay Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 5.25 inch drive bay from IC. And the second thing I want to mention is that the Bluetooth on this just works. Didn't have any problems with that. So in all, this is a very capable daily productivity machine with a lot of nice features for a laptop that is under 200 bucks. Now they do make a better model of the exact same laptop. It has four gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of flash memory. I highly suggest you guys go with that one because it's only like $40 more than this model. And that extra two gigabytes of RAM and additional storage, in my opinion, is totally worth it. So I will put the link to that one in the description along with this one. Uh, that's gonna be about it for this 
this video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to support me, you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links. You can also support me by checking out my Patreon. All those links will be in the description. And of course, please do not forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next installment of AA Computers and Technology.